Yeah. yeah. So, uh, as Zatif mentioned, right, uh, this is something that has gotten a lot between uh, in the last few months and last two years. And uh, like before I talk about what data mesh is, I, I just want to talk about why why data mesh came into the picture as well. So this these are some of the numbers from a survey that was done by New Vantage Partners. This is around the time when Jamak's article came around data mesh. And it kind of shows that uh, the number of firms who are investing like more than $500 million in like big data and AI initiatives that grew by more than 60%, right? The investment was growing, but on the other hand, the number of firms who were saying, hey, it's either the big data or AI initiatives are not giving any results or they're yet unproven or they're, it's too early. That as well was increasing. So it, it increased up to like 40%. So what this was showing us was a lot of data initiatives of failing and a lot of measures, be it like uh, trying to create a data-driven culture or uh, unable to treat data as a business asset or competing on data and analytics, right? And a lot of uh, common failure symptoms for the data initiatives, uh, I just want to briefly talk about those, was a lot of times it was just failure to bootstrap. So a lot of data initiatives are were technology driven rather than uh, use case driven which led to like months of uh, design discussions and technology evaluation without adding much value to the business and they even failed to bootstrap if they did start the other places there which they failed was while scaling and it was either due to scaling for the sources aspects or the consumers, the variety, the diversity of sources they have to handle. And especially as the uh, platforms and initiatives were scaling, that's where the problems were uh, coming up. Last but not the least is like failure to materialize data-driven value, right? So one initiative start to uh, solve a particular use case that didn't happen so another initiative started and so on and so forth so basically what they were getting started for that material that value was not being delivered and uh, there was not any culture change or org change beyond those pockets of R&D that were there in the organization so I'll also want to briefly touch upon the paradigms that are out there in the industry and uh, they, for example, we started the data industry with the, uh, we started with warehouse, data warehouses, right? And when we started seeing some uh, issues with it, the data lake came into the picture and that was is one of the most popular platforms, data lakes out there. Then the industry started moving towards cloud and it was nothing different. It's just that the warehouses or the on-prem data lake started moving to clouds, so started using cloud technologies. Now these paradigms are, do their work very well up to a certain level. I think the problem starts to come up when we talk about scaling or when we are trying to scale according to a demand. And that's where challenges start coming with these paradigms. It could be, there's a, like a disconnect between the domain experts who are producing the data and the consumers. There's like big gap getting created between the data producers and consumers, which eventually leads to all those failure symptoms that we talked about, especially if we are scaling. And that's with that in context, that's where data mesh comes into the picture. And uh, it's so it's a decentralized socio-technical approach. And the major part is it's for managing and accessing analytical data at scale. So that's really important aspects. It it data mesh brings about that thinking that it's trying to change that thinking that when you're thinking about data initiatives, moving from just uh, thinking about systems and tech perspective to more business or value-driven thinking. It's also trying to bring together uh, the org structure as well as the tech architecture to solve those problems that we were seeing in the paradigms that I just talked about, uh, trying to close the gap between the domain experts, um, bringing the producers and consumers closer, and also it, help, it, it makes it easier to scale, especially on demand. So that's where data mesh comes into the picture. And the foundation of that is these four core principles, uh, which I'll briefly touch upon. The first being uh, domain ownership, uh, which talks about uh, that the data that's being produced, the ownership of it, the responsibility of it is more is towards the domain, 
that are producing it or towards the business units in the organizations that are actually producing that data because those are eventually the domain experts uh, the second one talks about data as a product now this talks about bringing in product thinking when you're thinking of data how would the different data what kind could be the different kinds of data products what use case they are solving how would they be interacting with each other and that's where this principle talks about the third one is self-serve data infrastructure. It's basically all the capabilities that the data infrastructure should provide, plus being self-serve as well, one of the important points to implement these principles as well. So for example, we are trying to, this talks about uh, having as much, as much automation as possible. The idea being that the uh, developers or uh, the business analysts who are working on creating the data as a product, are more focused on the business use cases rather than thinking of infrastructure. They already have those things being provided by the platform or the self-serve data platform. The fourth principle, I think that relates the most to what uh, we just, Atif just talked about is the federated computational governance. So this is kind of built into data mesh itself. And this talks about how do we bring how do we enforce the standards in the data mesh ecosystem? How do we make sure that there is an interoperability between the data's data products? And the second aspect that it also talks about is it's it's federated. So the governance itself is uh, there's a bottom up approach as well. So a lot of standards or a lot of ownership is at the domain level as well. And then there are some uh, standards or the ownership that needs to happen on the global level as well. So it's like at each and every level, you have uh, this governance model that works along uh, with the all other principles together and brings all, all of these concepts together as well. So that's in brief about data mesh. I am not sure if I did justice to the topic, but yeah, that's, that's I'll hand over to Atif if he has uh, more to add or any questions. Yeah, I think um, so. One of the key things that stood out to me, Sumedha, this is like the social technical aspect. Uh, and, and that to me has been personally another very interesting concept of uh, data mesh, where I feel like it's very different um, from like other paradigms already out there. So, so why do you feel like social technical um, or what, what does it mean to be socio-technical? Uh, can you sort of explain more on that? Yeah, I'll definitely try my best. So, yeah, so when we talk about data mesh, right, it's it's not just talking about the tech and the tooling, right? But that's, that's the tech aspect when we generally talk about. The social aspect is a lot around the social structure, the org structure. How can we bring that culture into the organization itself? for people to understand. So these principles, right? Even if we talk about domain ownership and uh, the governance, there is a lot of tooling behind the scenes, which is helping to enable that. But in the end, it's a lot of uh, culture change for the organization as well. Going from a centralized structure where everyone, like there's a central team sitting and uh, managing all the governance to a more uh, federated structure where there is uh, one, someone at a global, which was enforcing global standards, but they're then the whole governance model, which is trickling down at each data product, business unit, domain on a domain level, which has a level of control on for their own domain, their own business units. They have that level of uh, deciding standards for that particular domain. Of course, there are few standards that needs to be enforced globally. So that's there. Again, with the domain ownership, right? That concept of... Uh, with the current paradigms, the concept of we are putting all the data uh, at one place and then there would be someone who is managing it or someone who will be going through it, analyzing it. And then it will go to the consumers that gap that to that thinking of the people who are producing the data, the experts, they are owning the data as well, the analytical data as well. And they'll be responsible for the quality uh, They'll because they'll know best about what the data they're publishing. So that's kind of adding that social change or the social aspect as well, along with all the tooling, obviously, which the self-serve data infrastructure talks about. Uh, it also talks about a lot of tooling, which uh, might not already be there, but building those uh, architectures or uh, uh, into place, which enable these aspects. So that's, I feel that's something 
uh, new that data mesh talks about um so vedha and adak can i add just one yeah, 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 yeah. just to you know illustrate this with an example right now i think sumedha did a great job of explaining the four principles and the social aspect which is very very important and that's why we call it a socio technical aspect right but think of this as a as a as an example right just try to paint a picture there is an operational team say which manages the order data within an e-commerce application right there is uh, orders coming in there are transactions coming in customers making purchases and there is a lot of tons and tons of order data getting generated so if, say i am part of that team right now in the historical world or the way we today perceive a lot of data ecosystems is that i am the team that's responsible for making sure that my system is available for the end customers right i am going to manage and make sure that the order transactions go through smooth and i am happy with that right and what i used to do was i would i would take this order data and there is a nice big ball right within my organization that i'm going to throw this data right over that ball right and on the other side of the ball there is sitting another team which is the centralized team that sumedha and atif both mentioned about right that and that team has the responsibility to make sense of what this data is about right and now imagine that within a large e-commerce organization there are at least 50 such teams producing different types of data from different quarters of the organization and all doing the same activity throwing their data over the wall now i want you just imagine what is this central team going through right they don't understand what all this data is coming from they don't understand what are the constraints and the quality standards that this data needs to adhere to they don't understand what are the needs of the consumers on this specific data right so now their situation is in a very <laughs> you know state of flux now having said this you know these these ecosystems they used to work right probably in small organizations where the needs were quite standard where we knew that okay these are the five reports that we need to produce at you know every one week or every four every one month and probably this used to scale but then now given the fact that we want to hypothesize on data we want to be a data driven organization and there is so much nimbleness that's required to you know expand the use cases that you want to address with data um that that shift is required right now instead of saying that central team should do all the heavy lifting of understanding all the context of the entire organization the social aspect of data mesh requires to shift this responsibility left right to the producers of the data that if i own the order data within the e-commerce domain i should be the one who should understand what are the insights that my consumers would be interested in on top of my order data right so i take ownership of my data not just from the operational transactional world but also from the analytical and insights world so i think that's the shift that i think best explain with an example to just you know put a perspective that what is changing from the social aspect at if uh, if that helps yeah no that i feel like that's a uh... great response to that problem also one of the things i've seen and i feel uh, is the reason why a lot of organizations fail to make any use of their data or have a bad governance policies uh, a you know when they try to for example decouple everything and say governance is separate technology is separate uh, right like you try to uh, like the governance are, are the set of people that will come in once uh the technology people do everything right and that doesn't work at all but at the other end of the spectrum are also companies which are sort of saying oh let's just you know completely change the way we work and bring in these new tools and technologies and you know uh, automate uh, everything from the first go itself and that doesn't work either right uh, because like it also depends on the people who are operating these tools because unless you build like a data culture over time unless you embed a governance um, and a lot of these things into uh, the organization right like you can't just change things overnight so it needs to evolve very organically um, and the tooling is highly dependent on the people uh, that are you know uh, driving uh, these changes cool so another interesting thing that you mentioned vanya is uh, this uh, notion of distributing responsibility right like so there are no central teams uh, my team is responsible for its own um, 
you know, uh, for its own data. So a question I had around that was like, how do you feel that works out? Because, uh, you know, if, if you delegate responsibility to everyone, uh, right, how, how do you make sure that uh, they're actually following your organizational policies. A lot of times what tends to happen is that people are not aware about uh, standards and procedures, or maybe uh, the other uh, thing that could happen is that maybe everyone has their own standards and uh, procedures. So in that way, like how do you uh, unite these people and um, you know, basically enforce some level of governance uh, for everyone? So I will I will add in Sumita. You can add in definitely after the response ones. So so if you look at the four principles that Sumita spoke about, right? Uh, one of the principles is domain ownership, which we spoke about, right? The pink the picture that we tried to paint with the e-commerce order management data example, right? Now at the right end we have the governance, which is the federated computational governance, right? That stands as one of the pillars of data mesh, and I think that's the beauty of it, right? That no change is possible unless we take a stab on people, process, and technology, right? And that's where I guess the federated word comes from. That if we want to talk about, you know, a governance which is not centralized government governance, right? That that is being enforced and mandated right from the top. What we are talking about is you still want to enable the team's autonomy to own their data, to understand what is the best way to represent their data, but then there still needs to be you know, the facets of interoperability, right? You still need some guidelines on how should data interact with each other across the domain boundaries. And I think that's where the federation comes into effect, right? That it's about upholding the sovereignty of the teams, but at the same time, establishing the guidelines. Again, I'm, I'm mentioning the word guidelines, not a mandate, right? Guidelines which say that, what are the ways in which I would do my data modeling, right? Now, if a customer is called cust in one domain, I would like to call it cust in the other domains as well, so that there is a likely way in which I can join this data, right? Because we all know that value gets unlocked when you are able to play with data, join data, you know, aggregate data. And I think to enable all of these facets, you do need a lot of consideration on how do you model your data, right? What are those global identifiers that should be leveraged, you know, across the domains to to mention or to address a given data point in a very unique way, right? So that data can be joined, right? So those guidelines can always be created by having representatives, you know, from all of these domains who understand the dualities of their domain, but at the same time can also represent how should the guideline be evolved, right? So there is no target state, uh, Atif here, right? It's all an evolution. And I think every organization is going to go through that learn and test culture where they identify what is the best push and pull between enabling the autonomy of the domains versus identifying sovereign guidelines, you know, with a group of people from, from various domains coming together to define them. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. Just, just to add to that as well, that, that since the principle is specifically computed, that, that the other word that computational that's there in the principle that, that actually talks about Atif, what you were saying, right? Who, who makes sure if there are some standards that need to be followed. So that's where the cells of infra talks about, like you should have something which helps automate those policies or you can create those policies through the automation, through the framework. It provides that framework so that you can create policies at a global level as well. And that platform helps in enforcing uh, those global level policies or standards that need to be there. Like something if, if for example, Vanya talks about that example. So there the customer becomes something that's really needed if, the, if there's no odd if the order is not against any customer it doesn't make sense that data needs to be like flagged or it needs to be figured out what's wrong there so for example that's one of the standards that needs to be there globally everything is linked to a customer so that's that's where that comes into the picture so to make sure that if there are our policies or standards that need to be followed across all business units there's a framework which can help create those policies, automate those and implement those standards. Yeah. Okay. So what I'm hearing is, uh, as a summary, if I were to summarize like a conversation is to have uh, governance has multiple layers, right? There is a central layer that is responsible for baking in the automation and the policies and the guidelines. 
and then the individual uh, layers or like the individual owners of the data extend that uh, uh, you know uh, extend those policies using that uh, central framework um cool so there's a question from the audience as well um is this data governance approach dependent on the company reaching a certain data size or right from the start so i i think i'll take that question uh, right so i feel like uh, if you're trying to do this uh, once your company has reached a certain size uh, you know you've already lost the game right uh, it means that now you suddenly have this big problem of how how do you scale out uh, that will limit you until you get the right practices in place right so technically according to uh, according to me a good governance approach is something where uh, you know you go lean for sure like you start out with the, uh, the most minimal set of governance and policies that you feel are right for the organization um, but at the same time like you try to empower the people to understand these policies uh and also make sure that people you know you you are building this uh, culture of uh, shared ownership uh, as you go along right as you increase in size not when you've reached a size uh, like a particular size at that point like if you try to scale it will take you time to just start introducing these ideas uh, these capabilities right uh, and it will just slow you down 